and welcome back to another action-packed episode of the Nintendo's Podcast. My name is Brayden, and across from me, I have the fashionable, the beautiful... Connor. I thought you were going to add another adjective there. My co-host... Oh, that's a noun. <laughs> uh, but, yes, hello. Hey, Connor, how's it going? I am good, how are you? I'm pretty good. What you been up to? Playing some video games. As, I, as we are wont to do, but... Uh, Nintendo games? Regrettably, non-Tendo games. Oh. I am deep into the throes of preparing for Elden Ring, mm-hmm. which is right around the corner, which is also a non-Tendo game, but I am a big Dark Souls and From Software drone, so I, I, I am excited, and then it's all I can think about. Fair enough, and... I have a feeling that it could be our first, like, Nintendo episode as well. <laughs> you know, just Elden Ring. Like, I'm, it, it's it's a big deal, and with you playing it, you know, maybe maybe we'll have to break from the mold for an episode. We'll really? see. Really? We'll you, see. You promise? Yeah, we just scared off all our listeners who are here for solely Nintendo content. Yeah, absolutely. Well... Back on Nintendo content, I've been building my Lego NES set. Yes. Uh, have you posted that on the Instagram? I that... I posted a picture of the box, um, and then I posted like one update picture, but I'm almost done, and it's really cool. If, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Go check it out, and I'll post like a finished product on Instagram when I'm done. But uh, Pretty sick, honestly. Shelled out more money than I should have, <laughs> but I always like a big, good big kid Lego set. Sure. Anyway. There have been some big releases, a big release in particular. It's a, uh, as of this recording, we just had the new Nintendo Direct drop. Um, mm-hmm. But prior prior to the Direct, I was about to say, like, we, it was kind of a dry season coming up. Like, right. Uh, this game that we're about to discuss was kind of like the last thing in Nintendo's lineup for quite a while. Yeah. But then obviously we have this direct and there's a few more things coming down the pipeline now. Uh, mm-hmm. But this was kind of like the last uh, the last drop of Nintendo's output for for the, for the fall and winter season, I guess. Right. We are hinting at... <laughs> Pokemon Legends Arceus, the newest addition into the Pokemon series. Arceus. Um, Arceus. Arceus. We'll, we will discuss. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll debate. But, yeah, what is up next, though? We got Kirby in the Forgotten Lands. Mm-hmm. Um, Sonic. I was expecting a Sonic Forces trailer at... Um, Forces? Sorry. Sonic yeah. Frontiers? Is that what it's called? The Sonic Breath of the I was expecting Lost a Kingdoms or Sonic something. Breath of the Wild <laughs> yeah. uh, trailer. I was also I mean this isn't a direct discussion. Uh-huh. But we're gonna get into Pokemon, but my like free space on like my Nintendo Direct bingo card, uh-huh. my like given, like I, I I'm a I'm a I'm all I'm one of the fools that holds out for like Metroid Prime Four, oh, Mario yeah. Odyssey Two, Mario Kart Nine, you know anything any of the big heavy hitters. Yeah. But my free space, my like given, was a trailer for the new Mario movie. <laughs> because that's what they announced at the last direct. You but, texted me that. Were you for yeah, real? Yes, I, but we didn't get it. I, that's really funny. We're, it's not that close. It's at the end of the year. We'll get there. We're gonna have like it'll we, be in a direct. I, you're probably right, but just not yet. I, I was pretty bewildered because that's they announced like the cast of the at the previous direct, right? And it's been a long time since then. Fair. I, what I'm predicting now is that it's going to be on Mario Day, March 10th. Mm. You know, that's mm-hmm. something that Nintendo has been embracing recently. Yeah, um, Drop a sweet trailer for that highly yeah. anticipated Mario movie. I just don't know what to expect. It's going to I, I just cannot wrap my head around it until I see it. And I just have to see it. Yeah. Just try not to expect anything. I and you won't be disappointed. I am going to be flabbergasted regardless. <laughs> uh, but anyway, sidetrack over Pokemon Legends. Arceus was, uh, yeah, a pretty heavy hitter, high-profile release at the end of like this Nintendo release season. That's right. Um, highly anticipated, and for good reason. Just because I don't know how how to describe it, other than like it's the first like Pokemon game that's come out 
that has bucked the traditional formula in like a long, long time. And and not in the way that like a mainline entry does. Like, I mean, like, you know, Sun and Moon kind of broke the mold by right. <laughs> not having Gym gyms. Like Sword and Shield had Gigantamax. You uh-huh. have big changes to the formula. Oh, yeah. But no, we've broken that cycle of tradition, sort of. Mm. Um, with the, Legends. Yes, with Legends. They are trying a new formula, which for a while... uh some of the earlier trailers it was really kind of notoriously reviled and speculated on like is this going to work is this going to be fun and will game freak in true game freak fashion like just fumble the ball yeah exactly like just really not manage to pull this together um when they're advertising this game as the Pokemon game we've imagined since we were kids, you know? And honestly, what we thought the wild areas would be in Pokemon Sword and Shield, um, they advertised, like, these huge open areas with Pokemon wandering around, which they did, but it did not play anything like we hoped it would, I guess. You know, they they perhaps didn't lead us on, you know, but they it was not what we wanted. Mm. And so Pokemon Legends Arceus, Arceus, forgive me, Arceus, <laughs> that's, this is going to be a problem throughout the episode, probably. Um, I think, yes, I, I think we can stick with Arceus yeah. until we feel, until we get to the point where we need to, we need to discuss yeah. the, the noted difference. Uh huh. Yeah. So I was the one that played it. Connor stayed on the sideline for this one, but he's done his research and yes. is ready to battle with words. <laughs> Yes. Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. We have this interesting dynamic that has continued to uh, carry over into our adult lives where we share one game because <laughs> we're brothers. And it's like, well, I don't know. We, I don't want to pay full price for the single player experience. If you have it, can I borrow it? Yeah. You know, but that means that you have to play it first. And I haven't gotten a chance to. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about spoilers to the end of the discussion. I mean, it's worth playing. And I, I'm thinking about giving it uh, a solid dive into, but uh, yes, you are you are the one that has the firsthand experience. All of my friends are playing it, so I've heard like plenty yeah, of other nice. impressions and like kind of know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And they've all been asking me, and I'm like, yeah, my brother's playing it. I'm gonna borrow it when he's done. <laughs> right. Yes. Well, after this podcast, it's all yours, my my, my friend, you my are little bro. So generous. You got it. I, I want to rewind just a little bit and back to what I was saying about. The build up, the hype being fairly toxic, <laughs> like, you know, just very not as toxic as Sword and Shield. That's true. You're right. Like there was the Pokedex gate like for that. There mm. was uh, the wild areas, obviously. I, I, and and I know you drew parallels to like the wild areas in Sword and Shield and the the uh, the general open world in Legends. Mm-hmm. Um, and I and I will say Legends has looked better from the get-go. Sword and Shield did look like ass from the get-go. Yeah. And I feel like, I mean, I know, like, the the reaction to Legends when it was revealed was a little kind of all over the place. I feel like there was, but generally it was more positive than the Sword and Shield reveal. Sure. Because it was already evident that it was going for something different. Sure. Rather than, like, I don't know, here's this attempt at something new but it's actually still the same it's a yeah it's a it's a disguise yeah i was part of the toxic crowd (laughs) i thought it looked really bad i thought game freak would mess it up um and so i i was going into it with very low expectations i was hopeful and I, i liked what they were going for you know the the open world is genuinely what we've always wanted from a Pokemon game and like not to get just super cheesy but as kids you'd go in the backyard and you would play make believe Pokemon and like catch them and you you know like it's it's what you imagined it would be like mm. and so here we are it finally released i grabbed it and it drew me in pretty quickly dare i say before i mean not to interrupt too severely but before you mm-hmm. dive right into it and i'll let you dive into it uh-huh. But I, dare I say that your expectations were kind of like at an all-time low, not only post Sword and Shield, but because we recently discussed it, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Like yes, you were openly, avidly acknowledging that maybe you have grown up <laughs> too much for Pokemon. That maybe you are like, I'm glad. Yeah, you you are that you there is. It's possible you're past it completely. 
even though and you've played every single new entry since mm -hmm. forever you've been the one i i dipped out quite some time ago but yeah. you have fervently played each one if not finished i know you didn't finish sword mm -hmm. um but you were acknowledging that maybe it was time to quit or that maybe pokemon had changed too much to your tastes to what you expect yeah or maybe you had either way it was it was almost time to to ring the bell that is a fascinating and fantastic point. Like, I'm so glad you brought that up because I don't think I would have failed to. And it's so true. Like I said, those words, Pokemon has not felt like it was for me for the past several games. And this truly felt like the make or break kind of. Mm. And so stepping into it, there was some pressure there. And I'm trying to find the right first step to take into it, but it well, Other than just saying it delivered, you know, like, and I'm trying to crack that shell, like where to, where to truly dive in. Well, the first step, I guess, if delivered on what, what is different about this one compared to the other, the most recent previous games or Pokemon generally as a whole, what, mm -hmm. what trend is it bucking? What is it doing different conceptually Yeah, that it is delivering on? I'll, I'm going to kind of relate to... A week or two before the game dropped, they did release a pretty full gameplay trailer. Uh, and so I'm going to kind of reference that just in case you haven't played it. And it's very spoiler free. But the core premise is you are playing in a 3D world, which was never done before in Pokemon, besides Sword and Shield Wild Area, <laughs> uh, with a rotatable 360 degree camera. The Pokemon are roaming in the wild. They are doing their own little thing and they have their own habitats. You roam the world and find them where they belong. Like out in the overworld, not like hidden in tall grass and stuff. Correct. Like you, just, you just see them hanging out like a la like Monster Hunter, just like in their natural environment. 100%. Out in the open. I've been holding off on the Monster Hunter okay. <laughs> uh, sure. words yet so far. But um, no, you're fine. But um, but yes, they are. They're just chilling. From there, you can choose, you, you have your character, you can choose to either throw a Pokeball at them or engage in battle with them, all of which stays in the overworld. You don't enter a battle mode, you don't have to go to a menu, you don't have to do anything to halt the, the flow of gameplay, you simply throw a Pokeball from your character or throw a Pokemon out, and a battle starts. And there is like a a battle menu that will appear, but you're in the overworld still. Your character can move around the Pokemon as they are battling. You can choose your Pokemon's attacks as you are running around them to get a different perspective of the attack. The premise is it's just, it's, it's all real time. It's all there. There's no loading screens. There's a few, but you know, it's, it's, it's Pokemon live. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pokemon live is a thing. Have you seen the videos of that? No, I haven't. It's a stage show No. based on the first, like the original Pokemon anime series. No. And there's like actors in the characters' costumes and they do musical numbers and Are po shit. people the Pokemon? Presumably. There's definitely somebody in a Pikachu costume. Anyway. That's terrible. Yes. Look up videos of it. Pokemon live. All right. Um... Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's a huge concept. Like, so it's interesting that it feels like such a huge concept right. because it's because, but this is the problem with Pokemon that we, that we've talked about mm -hmm. recently is that it feels like Pokemon is just like slow and like has stayed in its tradition and has kind of like been left in the past because like the combat system you're describing is was in Kingdom Hearts oh, in yeah. 2002. Oh, 100%. Like it's real time, but it mm -hmm. has like it it's real time, but it has a menu that you are accessing like on the fly mm -hmm. in real time. RPG commands and such that you're accessing the the Final Fantasy 7 remake recently is also a similar thing. Uh -huh. Even Xenoblade Chronicles. Well, and I yes, we we need to talk about that though mm -hmm. because it's not that real time. Okay. Actually, it's Okay. Nothing is running on a timer when you engage in battle. And so this is actually, this is, in short, the best Pokemon game that has released in 
years and years and years, but it is also the ground floor for the future of Pokemon. Like, there's so much room for improvement. And this is one of those features. The The combat is not yet real time. <laughs> uh, and so the Pokemon, your opponent Pokemon will wait for you to choose your attack before it will strike. It is not Xeno, it is not Xenoblade level combat. It's not I, I cooldown timers or anything like that. I, I don't know if you remember, like, uh, it was a while ago. It was like mm-hmm. a few minutes ago uh, that you said it was like real time. Now, I'm talking about and not turn based. <laughs> Shut up. I'm talking about <laughs> the entire the whole world is sure. is streamlined and uh yes. It's just wild that it, that it feels like such a giant leap mm-hmm. for Pokémon when again gaming as a whole is just like left it in the dust. This... But for Pokémon it's such it really is. It's like this is what it should have been a decade, a decade ago. Yes, this whole conversation is going to be stop and start like that. Sure. I want you to realize, right. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And... I'm going to say something like super obvious that <laughs> dozens of games have done before, much better, but mm. Pokemon's doing for the first time. Then maybe... and in ten years, it will pay off. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I should stop interrupting with the obvious interjections <laughs> then. And uh. Yeah, I, I but, don't know. But no, no, let's stay on the combat. Because you can engage multiple Pokemon at once. You can have three different Pokemon attacking your one Pokemon. And yet you can still only target one Pokemon. There aren't area of effect attacks. And so as this formula develops, I think it will grow closer to Xenoblade where the attacks are real time, you can attack multiple enemies at once. Like, it just feels like it. it's a couple mechanics short of that, you know? Then again, it may not, because this is a kid's game, and it's supposed to be easy. I don't know. But, my point stands, it feels like it's something that will develop over time. It, it feels like it should. Yes. Not only... I mean, again, I, I said that like a lot of my friends have it and have been talking about it. You're the first to make it sound more limited mm-hmm. um, and restricted than uh, others have made it sound. Mm-hmm. Um, but this room for improvement, I don't know. I feel like there's this like exterior element where we're all kind of hoping that this is a sea change for Pokemon <laughs> as, a, as a whole. Uh-huh. And it sounds like it could be. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, this game is successful. People like it. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it's not, like, the most revolutionary video game of all time. Right. It is certainly... I mean, it's it's the most... There is it the most revolutionary Pokemon game? Oh. That's come out? No doubt. Yes. Like, as far as, like, it's a... I mean, you know, not Pokemon Channel, not Pokemon Snap... Not Pokemon trading card game. As well, far I'm as like, of, I'm trying to think of like Ranger or Mystery Dungeon. You mm-hmm. know, some some big spinoffs that really, well, tried to change the formula, and like none of them are that are this drastic. What even. I th- what I think is actually the most apt comparison are like Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD. Of course, I have been holding off on that okay. as well. Oh, but not. But no, now's a good time. Okay. Now is a good time, because yes, those were quote-unquote open-world Pokemon games in 3D, like, but the Pokemon battles were contained, you know, it it, it took you to a battle screen. Mm. Um, I, I think the draw for those mostly was that they were, like, Pokemon, even the core ones are kind of, like, generally, like, I don't know, sort of a multiplayer experience. Like, there's trading and battling with yes. your friends and stuff. Like, that's inherent. And these were kind of, like, console quality like yes. high concept single player story campaign focused pokemon games and they each also had their own little twists like mm-hmm. the the big thing in coliseum was that you could catch trainers pokemon right obviously there was a caveat to that they were like shadow pokemon they were possessed yeah right <laughs> that they had to be like trapped or something uh-huh. um but they i don't know i that was like the big shakeup to the formula. And granted, that was over a decade ago, and it was like revolutionary for Pokemon at the time. In a way, still kind of is. You yeah. haven't been able to catch trainers Pokemon since then. That's kind <laughs> sure. of cool. In a, in a vacuum. And cool. 3D Pokemon games are still few and far between, like 3D adventure uh, Pokemon games. Sure. 
Yeah, like open, like open world, free roam. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I like because I know you. I know you. We can't. You, you said Monster Hunter, but like Breath of the Wild. Yeah, you know, it sets you out in this completely open area. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, I don't know how the world structure in Arceus uh, works necessarily. It's limited. Um, okay. I I want to touch on. I will touch on two things here that you've you've kind of brought up. First, being the, the single player element of it. This game is almost entirely single player driven, which personally strikes well. You know, I I am a single player gamer. I don't do tons of multiplayer gaming. And honestly, the competitive nature of Pokemon has always taken over my interest. I have always been interested in building a competitive team, but it's it's such dreary work to come up with and I'm not very good at it and my teams suck. And so like, I I always got frustrated with it. And like, that felt like the end goal of most Pokemon games. Whereas this game, it does have a limited Pokedex, but you can catch all of them. You find them all in the world. You can trade with people that you know. It it requires like a link code and stuff like that. Like players, you know? Play players, you know. Yes. Okay. Like you, friends. Like, but it is switch friends. Ex- yes, but you have to ex- be able to exchange the code with them. Like, it's it's a you are, you're establishing a one time trade with them. Okay. And so, um, not like a friend code, but right. like a one time like it's like a trading lobby almost. Interesting. And so, I mean. That's just more to the point that it's very isolated. You know, it's not intending for you to trade with people to complete your Pokedex. It wants you to catch them all yourself, but you can trade if you want. Does the game not seem to know that there are, like, subreddits out there where people are just, like, trading to complete their Pokedexes? Well, and I mean, like, that's fine. I think it, you know, I think they're aware, and they made that the option. I am very comforted by the fact that there's, it is not competitive, they did add a neat new feature to the battle system, like the strong and agile moves, where if you do strong moves, you do a little bit more damage, but the enemy gets to move twice. Whereas agile, you probably get to attack twice, but it deals a little bit less damage. And so there's an interesting combat dynamic there, and I'm so glad I'm not facing other players hmm. with this new combat dynamic. It works really well in single player mode. And that does seem to, I mean, that seems to be where, why Pokemon has stuck to the tradition for so long is that there are competitive players, Mm -hmm. the IV EV training that we've, that we've talked about before. Yeah. There's a, even though there's single player compet, like there's single player content to a Pokemon game, Mm -hmm. the kind of like competitive meta does like dictate what is actually present in a mainline Pokemon game. 100%. And because the end has... game. Any end game yeah, is exactly. entirely competitive. When all your Pokemon related. are level 100, then what? Yeah. yeah it's competitive. Yeah. Exactly. But this doesn't have to worry about that. Mm-hmm. Legends uh, operates on a different level. Not to say that there aren't trainer battles. So, Oh, ooh. interesting. I actually didn't know that. Okay. Let's, let's, let's back it up a little bit. Do you know the story of Legends Arceus? Roughly. This game takes place, I want to say, a thousand years before Diamond and Pearl. Um, Is it Diamond and Pearl or Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? Which universe? So. Oh, God. I don't... I want to say Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, actually, (laughs) because I'm pretty sure, like... There could possibly be, like, a different... Like, a differentiation between the releases and, like, the story content. Yeah, who cares? Hell if I know. But but it takes place in the Sinnoh region, the same region... It is called the Hisui region back then. Mm. Thousand years before. A thousand years before. And it's like and it's like feudal Japan, it's, sort of. Yes. And Pokemon are not friends. Yes, they're not domesticated yet. It's so cool. That's just that is another selling point to this game, is it has a compelling story almost. The story is not delicious it's still (laughs) legendary pokemon and you know weird things happening but the fact that the world is different than 
Pokemon and our best friends, and we battle them at the gyms. You introduce Pokemon to the town. Like, you know, people are like, hey, do you have anything that can help me water my crops? And you're like, yo, I got this Pokemon here. And so, That's like, cool. yeah, dude, it's awesome. It's great. So it's not, as, as, a, as a storyteller myself, a purveyor of the arts, story is a combination of character, world building, themes, mm-hmm. plot. Sure. And it's... I hear that the plot is not much. The plot itself is kind of Pokemon boilerplate. There's a legendary out there that's doing something. Uh Uh-huh. But the world building sounds really unique for Pokemon, especially. Like, it's, like, that. that's, was in that, like, gameplay trailer is that, like, yeah, humans have not, like, adapted to living in tandem with Pokemon yet. Yes. Which is, which is a really interesting concept. It's, it's fantastic. And it adds to the nature of wandering up to some of these Pokemon in the wilderness, um, particularly the alpha Pokemon, the ones with glowing red eyes. They are stronger and they'll tear you apart if you're under leveled in traditional RPG fashion. You know, it's it's terrific. It it really all feeds together very well. And so the yes, you're correct though. The plot leaves things to be desired. It's po- it's it's it is a Pokemon plot whereas the the context surrounding it is fantastic and much needed to the Pokemon franchise. What else is like it being said in the past and in this like different version of a region like provide contextually? Like, are you still using you're still using Pokeballs? So, yeah, let's let's. All right. We'll we'll say it now. Monster Hunter. (gasps) You said it. You said the M word. Monster Hunter. So it, it is similar to Monster Hunter in that you're going out. You are finding resources as well as Pokemon. There are different ores you have to find and different berries and materials to craft Pokeballs and potions and things like that. And the loop actually works really well. Like you you do need most of the supplies that you find um, and you'll end up utilizing them. You don't just stock up tons and tons of anything. And yes, you're crafting Pokeballs. So you go out, you, you shake some berries out of a tree, you take some stones out of the, the mountain, and you can make some Pokeballs. Then you go catch your Pokemon, rinse and repeat. Hmm. Um, I'm thinking about the gameplay trailer, uh-huh. and there's alpha Pokemon that have the red eyes, and yeah. they have like a big ass like life bar. Um, and I in that trailer, like the trainer is like dodging their attacks. How does that incorporate into this like semi turn? I mean, this turn based combat mm-hmm. system, but also the real time, yeah, free roaming elements of it. So it's interesting. You're, I think, you're kind of conflating two different aspects. So there are several Pokemon that are like particular boss Pokemon that have life bars, and they play a little bit differently. That's where you saw like them throwing those like spice balls at them okay. at the Pokemon like repeatedly and like so that's that's a boss battle you can kind of disregard that half so what do you mean they do feature heavily in the plot in the story but gameplay wise the boss battles play a little bit differently and they don't matter that much <laughs> but but the dodging the dodging that you're talking about is relevant and so stick around, like we can we can stick with that okay okay Let's stick with it. You can choose not to send a Pokemon out into battle. If you stumble upon a Pokemon in the wild, it will start attacking your character. The, uh, the trainer. The trainer. That's, that's new. That's that's yes, revolutionary I'm, for I'm, Pokemon. I'm incredibly sorry that we haven't mentioned that yet. No, sure. I mean, but, I, I think it was uh, 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 implied. Yes. But you've probably seen the memes that like, oh, don't go in the tall grass. The Pokemon will get you. And then it's the bottom. The bottom part is the trainer in the grass with the Pokemon out in the wild. And they're about to throw a Pokeball. Yeah. Like, so, I mean, the roles are reversed. Yes. But they'll. They'll attack you too. So let's let's just use Pikachu. Let's just do it. Who? The, it's, Is that a Pokemon? It's a yellow little thing. <laughs> Electric bunny. Okay. Um, like it'll it'll thundershock you, dude. And try to. And so you have to employ your dodge, your roll, to avoid its attacks. And there are a couple approaches you can take. You can try and get behind it, and you can usually throw a Pokeball at it. You can throw some like kind of 
distraction type lure items and it'll distract the Pokemon or throw them off guard so then they are open to a Pokeball. But if they're attacking you, you can't you can't throw it. Like it'll just the Pokeball will bounce off. That's when you need to employ the Pokemon you have in your party? Yes, or you can run away. You can roll away. You can just keep dodging attacks. You know, you can... You can. It's an open world game. You know what I mean? It's one of the greatest senses of choice that I think Pokemon has presented in a long time. Like, how do you want to approach this Pokemon? Do you want to try and sneak up on it? Do you want to battle it? Do you want to just kill it? Do you want to catch it? It's refreshing. The so let me let, let me illustrate mm -hmm. the gameplay loop. Mm -hmm. There's a Pokemon uh -huh. in the wild, mm -hmm. and you have yet to engage with it. Mm -hmm. You're sneaking up on it. You toss a Pokeball at it, and you catch it, and that's the objective. Uh huh. But it can go awry sometimes. Like that, it's there's a bunch of little Pokemon, mm -hmm. medium Pokemon yeah. in the wild, and you get an advantage if you are undetected. You sneak up on it. You take you toss a Pokeball at it. Uh huh. That is revolutionary in Pokemon. Uh -huh. You have to, like, make a Pokemon near death <laughs> Yeah. in most traditional Pokemon games to catch it. Uh -huh. You have to fight it. Mm -hmm. You can't just, like, yeah. Um, that is revolutionary in itself. <laughs> yeah. For Pokemon. Which is bizarre. For Pokemon. Dumb. Yes. Terrible. But not, well, credit where it's due. Uh -huh. But sure. also credit where it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, gaming is, like, 20 years ahead. <laughs> anyway. That's that's the objective, is to sneak up on Pokemon and catch them, because that's the easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, you accidentally get their attention, mm -hmm. they start attacking you, that's when you employ your Pokemon to get them down to near death, uh -huh. so that you can catch them. Beautiful. That's the gameplay loop. Uh -huh. And then there's boss Pokemon that the gameplay trailer made a big deal about, and looked cool, looked very Monster Hunter. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what... What what I what what my mental image of the game is now um, confusing mm -hmm. is you have a bunch of Pokemon at your disposal in your arsenal. Mm -hmm. In the gameplay trailer, they show you like gliding, yeah, a la the paraglider in Breath of the Wild. Yep, with like I don't know, like a Wingle or something, mm -hmm. like some Pokemon. Um, Braviary, but okay. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Um, you couldn't tell me what generation Braviary is from. Name it. Oh, crap. That's right. Yeah. Get, right. Off, okay. get off my ass. <laughs> yeah, you, you catch Pokemon and they unlock certain utilities. You mm -hmm. can, like, ride a, a Rapidash or a Ponyta across the landscape. You can ride on its back to, like, get go faster, you know, as kind of a vehicle. You're, what are you saying with your expression right now? One of these days, you'll be able to ride your own Pokemon. That is another platform for this game to build on. Okay. The Pokemon that you see in the trailers, they are essentially HM slaves. Like, <laughs> you, you you summon Braviary every time. You summon Basque Legion every time you want to swim. Okay. You summon... I don't remember what Stantler's evolution is. He's brand new to this game. Um, but, like, if you want to ride the deer thing, like, if you want to move fast, you summon him every time and okay. so that will be a development you know sure. what i mean one day you will ride the rapidash that you caught out in the wild but so, right now it's a it's a it's a vehicle that's something that's like a function that is unlocked at some point in like the correct. The, the linear plot correct 100%. that's interesting because that's such a that's what the gameplay trailer alluded to if mm -hmm. not outright like like said like was you can't fly know. until in game, like you know uh, what I mean. Like it's it's it, it is interesting. That is interesting. Which, I, it it provided drive. I wanted to be able to fly, so I kept playing the game. Right. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I'll give them that. There's a concept at hand mm -hmm. that. Ah, oh, it it's, sounds like they're so close. It's such a massive like just dis yeah yeah like this this conversation we're not done but it could go on for five more hours sure like just yeah discussing every little thing and they discussed every little thing for 500 hours in like, the development in development and i don't know I what's gonna balance right what's gonna feel right what's gonna be fun what's going to be realistic at this point you know well the optim the optimist in me says that it's a matter of development time and crunch mm -hmm. because i mean again alluded to in the gameplay trailer if not outright implied mm -hmm. my understanding was that like 
you catch a ponyta or a stantler in the wild, and that's how you unlock right riding him, right. riding it in. If only, in, right? And mm-hmm. that, but that's the concept. That's uh-huh. what it needs to be. Mm-hmm. That's like what Pokemon should be. I mean, that's what it is in the core games. Practically, is like you, you know, uh-huh. eventually you. Like you catch water Pokemon, you catch a Lapras. Like I don't and then know. Then you use it to surf. But but you get the HM to surf. Uh-huh. You know, eventually, and yeah. then you ride it in the water. You know, but like for something like this, whether it's like Breath of the Wild, where you accidentally stumble on like I don't know Gerudo Desert, uh-huh. um, something that's relatively more intent, like by the canon, is more intended for end game, but acknowledges that you can get there from the beginning if you want to. Mm-hmm. You accidentally get surf. Yeah. Um, something that's intended for, like, I don't know, midway through the game. Right. But it it, it, adap- it adapts for that. Uh-huh. You know, that kind of freedom of choice. If only. Yeah. If only. Mm. But maybe next entry. Maybe uh-huh. next Legends. Yes. Maybe Pokemon Legends Lugia. Um, yeah, whoever. Ooh, that'd be cool. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Lugia. I just like second gen. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. But that's really interesting. That That is, that, that is so... We it, are... We are idealizing a lot here. Like, these are such concepts that have been done. We need to reiterate every time. They've, these have been done for 20 years. Like, <laughs> yeah. games are better than this. But it's finally Pokemon that's catching re- up. That's a really depressing thing. Yeah, it is. To say. But Pokemon is catching up. It's getting there. Pokemon is a huge franchise to tackle. You, there, there are less than 250 Pokemon in this game. Mm-hmm. Out of over 900. Well, that's more fair to say for this game than it is for Sword and Shield. Oh, yeah. You know? Huh, yeah, yeah. With the utility of certain Pokemon and, like, the love and life put into them. Mm-hmm. And, like, obviously, like, just the whole balancing act of, like, this whole this game operates completely different than a conventional... You can't just plug in all 900-some right. Pokemon uh-huh. like you could, like conceptually into Sword and Shield, Mm -hmm. a traditional Pokemon, and let it work, and then, like, let, like, the competitive meta develop on top of that, Mm -hmm. you know? This is a single-player experience, and it needs to be properly balanced and refined and confined to certain things, which is, I I think I remember talking about in some Pokemon episode we did, that Mm -hmm. that was what I expected from Sword and Shield, because they limited the Pokedex Mm -hmm. from the get-go, was, like, these Pokemon should be refined and the animations should be awesome uh-huh. and they should be really cool and engaging because they're only doing so many from the get-go and that yeah didn't they happen. had no excuse and it didn't happen did it happen for this one attacks look pretty damn cool man i don't know okay. if you've seen any of the videos of gyarados mm. annihilating an eevee with hyper beam not but much it looks like eevee has been scorched from the face of the earth like Okay, cool. Like, the attacks are good. The Pokemon look good. I am i cannot complain about the quality of the Pokemon. The presentation. The presentation. Mm-hmm. It does look a little <laughs> simplistic. Uh, Wii era, if, you know. Again, development time. Mm-hmm. This, it fe- like. It felt crunched. Sure. Okay, that's good to hear you say. Because, like, on the outside, just for, like, from the announcement to mm-hmm. the release and everything in between it 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 just like it speaks a little rushed yes yes um which is again a testament to like what it could do in the future when mm-hmm. it's like this game this game sold gangbusters mm-hmm. and speaks to what players want from a, a different kind of pokemon game and what we can get next yeah how does arceus fit into it hardly uh... <laughs> So it's cool. There's like a diamond clan and there's a pearl clan and they both worship Sinnoh, right? Who, right, that's the name of the the continent that you're on. It just Um, blew my mind. Yes. And so it turns out they're both worshiping (laughs) Palkia and Dialga, you know, respectively. And Sinnoh is actually Arceus. And so, you know, there's... That's kind of cool. It, it it builds up like it, there's lore, there's lore building, genuine lore, interesting stuff. But Arceus like 
You can catch him, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can you can like catch you're, you're God the t- Almighty, yeah, the God the of all reality, catching Arceus, but but it's not a, it's not like that cool. You can't like control reality after you catch. Arceus. Unfortunately, not like yeah. What no, do you do with it? No debug mode or anything. <laughs> yeah, that um, would be a that's a Pokemon. Could you imagine that? So that would put Pokemon ahead of gaming 20 years Mm -hmm. if letting if you catching the god of all reality Pokemon (laughs) of all universes Pokemon let you access debug mode. That's the Pokemon game I want to play. Call me when they make Pokemon Legend. Call me when they make Pokemon Legends Lugia Mew Mm -hmm. Celebi whatever Pokemon Legends Arceus two ROM edition (laughs) RX yeah. Um, or something, but wait. So, but like, actually, what is does Arceus do anything cool after you get him? Not, not in particular, really. No. Okay. Um, what moves does he have? I don't know. I don't use the legendaries. What the hell? Legendaries are OP and boring. Like they don't provide any entertainment. Yeah, they give you debug mode. <laughs> <laughs> they are overpowered. Yeah, what I, a- I genuinely couldn't tell you. That's uh, disappointing to the, me. He is the end of the post game. Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, no so, doubt. Yeah. I don't know. That's kind of like. I mean, I don't know. Uh, there's a there's a thorn in my side, and when I'm talking about like subsequent entries to like this format, the Pokemon mm-hmm. Legends format, is like Arceus is like the god Pokemon. Where do you go from here? You can't get much bigger than that. It's a little other than like I don't know maybe Eveltal and Xerneas. Yeah, I guess I don't are even cooler. Yeah. Or black and white Zekrom Reshram? Most of those Pokemon, like, they are just... They, they seem so much lesser, though. You know, right. they are, I they're, mean, yeah. they are Pokemon of one element or one... Sure. I mean, even... Philosophy. Like, uh, time and space, Dialga and uh-huh. Palkia, like, are subsur... Yeah, when you start with the god Pokemon, yeah, you can't go much Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they work that out. Mm. Um, Arceus. Know. Arceus? Arceus. Arceus. Tell us, tell the audience why. All right. So you're the kid who fell out of the portal in the sky, who probably fell from like the diamond and pearl era. Do you know that? What? Yeah. It's probably the same kid. What? It's probably the same kid. Um, Is that, wait, 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 time out. This, you're not playing as someone that's just like from the Hisui region? No. You are a modern era kid a modern who falls major model through of a modern major major gentleman that's a theater thing theater sorry nerd. sorry um but no you're a kid who Cut falls that. out of a portal in the sky due to Arceus dragging you through he gives you a cell phone as you're falling through the portal and you land in the Hisui region time out again what you heard me there was something you said in there that I don't think was as silly as you made it as Arceus gives you a cell phone. Okay, yeah. It's called the Arc Phone. It's uh, your map, and why it leads you to important things. Why? So why does so, God give you a cell so phone? So that you but can this save. Isn't, this isn't El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron. No. There are cell phones and God in that. I, but that's a biblical. I may have missed like a story beat, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why you are the kid. I don't know why you get a cell phone. But the, what wait, kind no, of cell phone? Sh- it's, it's feudal Japan. You just said that. It's called the Arc Phone, and it's a futuristic, old-timey cell phone that gives you the secrets of Ar- Arceus. But you want to know why they retconned Arceus's name to Arceus instead of Arceus, which it used to be in the anime? Because they didn't want to call the Arc Phone Ars Phone. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. They retconned 10 years of Pokemon lore so that they didn't have to say arse phone. Well, so that they could give this kid a cell phone. Okay. A space time cell phone. There's a lot to digest here. Um, first of all, it's tricky because the anime. The anime is like the only frame of reference for how the Pokemon's names sure. are officially pronounced. For sure. And it, I mean... Maybe Nintendo. I mean, I'm sure like Nintendo announcers and narrators on videos and things have said Arceus before. Maybe. But I don't know. It, Arceus sounds like a fluke. Like, it, like when you read it, you read Arceus. You're like right. Ar- Arc sounds like... 
I think you're right. The phonetically, I don't know. It sounds correct to me. Hmm. Um, I don't know. But but you're absolutely right. In like the Arceus like movie or whatever for the Pokemon anime, mm-hmm. they do say Arceus. That's the that's the what they chose for better or for worse for richer or for poorer, intentional or not. Um, you English, great British idiots ruined it for us with your arse. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's your. It's all your wife's fault. Yeah, my British wife. Yeah, tune into Nintendo Gems uh, Pokemon Battle, Pokemon Snap versus beep, beep. Pokemon Ranger to learn more about Brayden's wife and how she's from Britain, and also Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> 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 Nailed it. Um, yeah, I mean that 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 happens in anime. That sounds like a fluke. Uh-huh. I think that was a fluke from like from the word go is that they did, stuck with Arceus for some reason. I don't uh-huh. know. And I, and maybe that, I don't know, maybe that was to avoid some sort of religious angle for the states. Hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, maybe, I'm, I mean, I'm sure they didn't call him a god. Oh, yeah. Because that would upset, you know, uh-huh. uh, the <laughs> types that Nintendo tries not to upset mm-hmm. with their uh, first party published releases. <laughs> um, but for our are for Pokemon, Pokemon Legends Arceus Arceus. They changed it to Arceus Canon mm-hmm. in Canon. the games, which w- which are what matter. Mm-hmm. Anime, who cares? Who cares? Uh, Ash Greninja, not Canon. I don't know what you mean by that, but <laughs> uh, I thought you played the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, bro. Ash Greninja. There was a special. I think it might have even been been like the like historically the first Pokemon League that Ash beat. Like Greninja and Ash like fused. Are you for real? Yeah. Like I, for sure. Are you like are you at all like be befu- like are you at all confused on the context of that or do they like it? It's, may or, it's pretty like Ash may or, cut. I don't know. It may have still been Greninja and Ash separate, but Greninja got like kind of a hat and kind of Ash hair, and then he like got Won better. The Pokemon League. Yeah, and then it was like a it was like a bonus Pokemon in like I think Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I have Moon. that card. Huh? I have a Ash Greninja card. Well, then why do you why don't you know what I'm talking about? I thought it was a promo card. I mean, yeah, for the Ash Greninja <laughs> thing that happened. God, we, that's terrible. I'm surprised. Okay, cool. Watch uh, the clip on YouTube or something. All right, I'm and right. or collect your free bonus Pokemon in Ultra, Ultra Soon and Ultra Moon now. For, we, we, no, for 3ds. Yeah. Oh, right. Not we. Um, what was I saying? I was getting to a point. I promise. Oh, anime, non-canon. Arceus, Arceus, anime, non-canon. Yeah, I think it was Arceus the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it was a fluke in the anime. And you get a cell phone in this. So why why does he give you a cell phone? Please, please. I please. really don't know. I, like, Save me from, from mania, I'm, from going crazy. Why does Arc? No, it's your turn to play the game. You tell me. <sighs> because I, I may have missed a story beat. It might just be a awful... What kind of phone? It looks a little like it has like little Arceus horns on the top. It's white and it ha- it might even have eyes. It's and it's almost tablet sized, I think, but it's the Arc phone. It calls it the Arc phone. Boilers or not? Does the conclusion of the game explain like why Arceus led himself to you, or, or sorry, vice versa, remember. led you to him? Like why he brought you through time? And why he gave you the phone and what you're like, surely he's like, you have the knowledge of the future and only you can All right, look, bring, look, you are the tool that brings Pokemon and humanity together. And that's like your function in the game. Mm-hmm. That's like what you're doing is finally is like lore wise, canonically bringing Pokemon and humans into into harmony and he's like, and Arceus is like, this is why I brought you here. This was your grand purpose, and you served it. Now, put me in a Pokeball, and I will uh, be in your party, and you can tell me to do whatever you want, and I will never You want to know escape. the truth? You want to know the truth? Yeah, he uses uh, gravity. That's was, one of his attacks. No, it was like 2 a.m. <laughs> I was tired of the game. I've been <laughs> grinding. I'm pretty sure I had the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, <laughs> and and I I completed the post game. I got Arceus, Garceus. I haven't used them since. I don't remember. Man, imagine if I had the volume down when I was fighting Sands. 
Wow. What I would have missed. You I were just, a I, fake so, gamer. So, like, like, look, I beat the game, and, like, I paid attention through the credits and stuff, but the post-game, I pretty much breezed through. I have hit the point of JRPG where you have to grind and reload areas to create the spawn that you need. They have created some Pokemon with absurdly low spawn rates and so like it's it's to a grindy rate um i'm gonna lend it to you if you want to play it so you saw the nintendo direct they announced xenoblade chronicles 3 i need to play 2 triangle strategy comes out soon i have octopath traveler also on my shelf i need to play um i am moving on and so all that said arceus is super fun it drew me in for several days but it is far from a perfect game it does not necessarily have, like, longevity to it. There is limited content. Like, I mean, you are either catching Pokemon, battling Pokemon, or crafting the resources to do so. And so, like, I mean, it's the best Pokemon game in ages. But exactly as I think we said at the start, it you know, it just it is the foundation for more to come. I think there will be better Pokemon Legends games in the near future i don't know what's going to happen to the mainline games i it, maybe they'll merge i don't you know i don't know but this is really it's great pick it up if you at all love pokemon i guarantee that you'll have fun for for hours you know <laughs> i i do have i have 40 50 hours of the game in my switch and so like okay well, money well well spent so i just don't want to play it anymore Sure, and because it's a single player game, mm-hmm. and you roll the credits, yeah. and you beat the single player experience, and you there's bonus content, there's post game content. That's all well and good and super normal. Last we discussed Pokemon, we were talking about Pokemon Burnout, mm-hmm. and how we hoped this would be like a change of tide for Pokemon series, as we've already addressed in this episode. Yeah. Now, I want you to think about people that don't like Pokemon, mm-hmm. people that like Pokemon presently. Mm-hmm. And then everyone in between who has liked Pokemon but has since been burned out on the relatively, like, I don't know, since Black and White, since yeah, Sun and Moon, sure. X and Y, Sword and Shield. Like, do you think a meta IV, EV competitive training Pokemon player would enjoy this game? Yeah. Would find something to enjoy in yes. this game? Yes. Yes, I do. I think the new additions to the battle system, the strong and agile attacks, are interesting enough. The fact that there's both trainer battles and wild Pokemon will attract people. I work in a retail establishment with people of all ages, and I've had, I, I want to say two people say they've considered buying a Switch for this game. Yeah, that's... And I, I say, I don't, I, I kind of say don't do it. <laughs> the game is, like, there's not enough content to justify if all 900 Pokemon were in this game and you could play this game for a year, I'd say maybe do it. But I mean, no matter what, there's 60 to 70 hours worth of content. It is not a console seller. You know what I mean? If there's other things you want to play on a switch, go for it. Um, but like, don't buy a switch to play this new Pokemon game. It's not the one, it's not the end all be all of Pokemon, but it's such a, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to underestimate the experience that you are describing. But I have a friend that bought a Switch for this. Okay, cool. And is enjoying it. I don't know if it's worth it. I've been. Uh-huh. I've since told him like, yeah, check out like Sword and Shield if you want like a real like I don't know, <laughs> a real quote unquote Pokemon game. Uh-huh. Try out Diamond and Pearl if that's like where you kind of like jumped off of the series. Mm-hmm. You know, for those people in between. I mean, like this is this is kind of maybe not the perfect idyllic image of what pokemon should be mm-hmm. but it's a stepping stone to getting there right uh, and it's worth jumping in if, huh? if you have a switch maybe For not sure. if you have a switch I, if you love pokemon what's super weird is i told the kid get a switch light don't get a switch <laughs> like it's worth 200 dollars, not 300 or 350 for an oled like you know uh, if, if pokemon is like all you want you know what i mean if you're at all interested in anything else then yeah buy a switch like my switch is my baby man yeah like, uh, there's i mean that's the that's the, i mean that's the secret to any nintendo console is like people play for pokemon mario. it's a gateway drug right <laughs> people play for pokemon mario zelda uh-huh. like the big names but then there's thousands and thousands of worthwhile titles uh-huh. immediately at your disposal yeah. and on the switch to go or at home mm-hmm. you know 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's, you know, that your mileage may vary, like, <laughs> yeah, obviously, but it is, if you've played Pokemon before and you want the, the, the future of Pokemon, you want to try it, grab this game. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I do think it's worth the money. I do think there's room for improvement. And we do think that this w- that this is the ground floor of mm-hmm. the Pokemon franchise as it goes forward. I think so. Pokemon games, we really think so. Are I, we putting our money on it? I, I would. I would. Yeah. I can only hope so. I think they set it up so that it could be mm. because they did Pokemon Legends colon Ar- Arceus. Right. You know, there's room to iterate on top if they need to, but they played it safe and they only did like the development time was only so long mm. and they only did mm-hmm. so much with the concept. I think they intentionally left room in case it was a failure or a success. Yeah. Because because of the reaction to, to Sword and Shield. And, and the also to the trailers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and to the reaction, I don't know, just I think they can feel where Pokemon is right now. Yeah. And I think this is uh, testing the waters mm-hmm. for the future. Sure. I, I hope it's a sea change for the series. Me too. One can only hope. And for you competitive IV EV trainers out there, your days are numbered. Yeah. <laughs> we want good games. <laughs> we do want good games. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us for this episode on Pokemon Legends Arceus. Arceus. Arceus, the Arse phone. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely, thank you for sticking with us. We appreciate each and every one of you listeners. Like, you, there's an antenna coming out of your butt, and you have to, like, turn around and speak into, like, your butt as the phone. Yeah. The Arse phone. The Arse phone. <laughs> um, anyway, you can cut that if you want to. <laughs> yes, anyway, whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on right now, please subscribe. It would mean a lot. And rate us as well. We don't have many ratings. We don't have many reviews. You would be the first. Get on. Get in on the ground floor, like, like Pokemon Legends Arceus, mm-hmm. you know? Follow us on Instagram if you do not do so. We post some sweet content about the episodes that we're talking about and, you know, some fun stuff otherwise. I know you want to see me finish my Lego set. Mm -hmm. But all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Brayden. And I am Connor. And this has been Nintendo Gems. We will see you next time. Love you.